Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. Hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to be talking about something that I've never really talked about on my channel, and that is basically the power that I've got coming into my room. And where this comes from is a question from Made in the USA. He says, at Youth Man, can you show us a uh, like your power setup, 20 amp dedicated, how many if you have a whole house surge in your panel and what it looks like for your home audio. Uh, I'm assuming he means behind your rat's nest and what that looks like. And so this is a video, I'm gonna answer those questions. What do I have running in my room um, for power, for a dedicated uh, uh, theater room? What equipment do I have that hooked up to it? I'll share with you, is that enough? Um, and then I'll also take you behind the cabinet, which I've never actually done really, um, I'll take you behind the screen. I'll show you the electrical side of it. I'll show you the cable side of it. And I'll even show you my rat's nest behind the, the cabinet. Hopefully it's not too bad. Uh, I think I've done a decent job at cable management. Uh, but again, I've never really shared that aspect of my home theater. And so hopefully you'll find that valuable. Now, before we jump into the video, if you're passionate about home theater like I am, and you just love all things home theater, I produce weekly content on this channel that I believe you'll enjoy. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you'll be notified every time a new video drops. Now, before I take you behind the screen and behind the cabinet and kind of show you that aspect of it, I want to kind of back up 13 years ago when we began to build this dedicated theater room. Now, at that time, the room had a 15 amp circuit that was powering everything. All the wall outlets and the lighting were all tied to a 15 amp circuit in the garage is where my breaker is and where my uh, power box is, I guess what you call it. Now, I'm going to throw this disclaimer out there. I may say some things like I just said, power box, and you're like, what the heck is that? I'm not an electrician, okay? I'm just gonna share it in just pretty much layman's terms to make it easy to understand. And uh, so if I say something wrong, just forgive me. Now, when we moved into our home 13 years ago, this room just had a dedicated 15 amp circuit to this room. And so that was powering all of the electrical outlets. Later on down the road, we installed six in-ceiling can lights, and that was also tied under that same 15 amp circuit. And so one thing I noticed is later on I added, uh, I bought some new clip subwoofers. They were the RT-10D. Now the RT-10Ds had a single active 10 inch driver um, on the front and then on the back corners, cause it was like a triangle shape, uh, on the back two corners has a 10 inch passive each. So there were three 10 inch woofers on each subwoofer and a powered amplifier built into each one of those. So one thing I noticed is when I would crank up the, the volume pretty loud, I would notice that my six can lights would actually dim every time the bass would hit. And so what that tells me is that there's not enough power to be able to handle that type of load and to be able to keep the you know that amplifier performing at its peak level. So at that time I had a different cabinet than I do now. My front wall was a black cabinet and it hid all of my components just like the new cabinet does, but it had a smaller 103 inch screen and that was a non-acoustic transparent screen. So at that time my speakers worked pretty good um, other than the center channel was really high and then the side speakers were kind of tucked into these little cabinets and this little cubby hole didn't really sound that great. It wasn't most ideal setup. So later on, I purchased three Clips La Scala speakers. And at that point we were like, man, what are we gonna do with this? I mean, it's not gonna fit behind my cabinet. So I asked my buddy of mine, what are some ideas? What are some things that I could do? How could I get these new La Scalas um, you know, into my cabinet? He said, Michael, we'll just build you a new cabinet. And so I'm like, okay, cool. Let's just build a new cabinet. You know, I know nothing about that but he is super talented. And he told me, since we're gonna redo your front sound stage and redo your, your cabinet, and we're, you're probably gonna be adding amplifiers down the road, maybe even bigger speakers, we might as well run a dedicated 20 amp to your room and separate your equipment from the lights. Now that's a great thing to do in and of itself because um, lights have dimmers in them, and so you don't want to have that dimming, kind of that sound come through your speakers or your amplifiers. Sometimes that can happen. 
So it's always a good idea if you can run all of your equipment on its own dedicated power, whether that's a dedicated 20 amp or dedicated, you know, some people run dual 20 amps or even three 20 amps. We'll talk about that in a little bit on what I have in my room, but needless to say, we ended up running a dedicated 20 amp circuit to this room. And that's just for my equipment. Now I'm not going to take you into the garage. It's honestly, there's nothing fancy. It's literally uh, your standard electrical box. You open it up, you're going to see 15 amp, 15 amp, 15 amp, 15 amp. That's to all the rooms. And then one of those we removed and put a 20 amp. And then we installed a really thick, I believe it was either 10 gauge or 12 gauge Romex power cable. And so that runs from that breaker all the way up through my attic, down the back wall, and then it comes into the room. And then that's where we got everything connected. And I'll show you that physically here in just a little bit. Now, one decision we made that I think is extremely important is we ended up running all of the power down this side, my left side of my room, and then we ran all of my signal cables on the opposite side up in the attic. So we've got uh, my rear surround speaker wires coming in the right side. We've got the HDMI cable from the projector coming in the right side. You never want to run power and signal in parallel, like next to each other, like down the left side of your room or down the right side of your room. Always want to separate that when you can. If you have to cross them, like get them next to each other, cross them perpendicular. And I learned that again, back in car audio days, you always wanted to run, like if you were installing an amplifier in your trunk, you would run the power cable, say down the driver's side, of the car, like under the carpet, and then you'd run all your uh, RCA cables, your trigger turn on switch, um, and your speaker wires down the right side, the passenger side of your car. And so you always want to separate those signals. So we did that here in this room. And like I said, I'll show you that in particular when we look behind the screen in just a moment. And so once we installed the dedicated 20 amp to all of my equipment and separated that from the lights, the lights are on the old 15 amp circuit. Um, I, number one, I've never tripped a breaker and I've upgraded quite a bit over the years from those clips RT 10 Ds. I now have 418s with a 4,000 watt amp continuous uh, amplifier for each subwoofer. And I also have a dedicated amplifier for all of my speakers, which is a Monolith 11X, and that's 200 watts by three and 100 watts by eight. So there's a lot of equipment in here, a lot of power, and I've never once tripped a breaker with a single 20 amp circuit. And so now let's go ahead and take a look behind the screen. Again, I've never really done this before, um, so hopefully you'll find this content helpful, especially if you're wanting to install something like this or if you're wanting to upgrade your electrical. I would highly recommend if you're only running like a 15 amp circuit, especially if it's just that to your room, um, hire an electrician or get somebody that, that knows how to install that safely and run um, at least a dedicated 20. Some guys choose to run, uh, you know, two 20 amps or uh, I don't even know if they make a 30 amp circuit. I'm assuming they do. Um, but I can just tell you from my experience, I've never had any issues with power running a single 20 amp circuit, running four subwoofers, two big subwoofers with 18s and 4,000 watt continuous amplifiers. Um, that's never been an issue here in my theater room. So let's go ahead and take a look behind the screen and I'll just give you a tour and show you exactly how we've got it laid out. All right, so up front underneath, there's just a little latch and that allows me to, Alexa, speaker lights on. That allows me to go ahead and lift this up. It's supported by gas shocks. I've actually got a video on that. Sorry, the lighting is gonna be pretty horrible here unless, let's see if we can use my other light here. All right, hopefully you guys can see a little bit better with the lights turned on in here. So here up front, we've got my Clips uh, La Scalas. These are from 1980. These are really old school, but they still sound phenomenal. Uh, that's my LCR from my left, my center, and my right. 
Anytime you can do identical speakers, whether it's three towers, three bookshelf speakers, um, you know, even like this, I've got big uh, cabinets. These sound phenomenal, even though they're from 1980, but an LCR is fantastic for a dedicated room, especially with an acoustic transparent screen. Then in between the La Scalas, I have a pair of JTR Captivator RS2s. Now these have dual 18 inch woofers in them with a 4,000 watt continuous amplifier. Now I've actually got these turned um, kind of facing out towards the walls. When I was taking some measurements with REW and a friend of mine and I were calibrating it using the mini DSP and taking those measurements, we actually found we got slightly better, it wasn't much, but slightly better bass response and a flatter frequency response with these turned sideways. And so um, again, that's another reason why it's a good idea to take measurements in your room with REW because you're only guessing if you don't have some kind of equipment to be able to measure that frequency response. And so now let's go ahead and take a look. I'm gonna switch under here. So my friend installed a light. It's kind of a work light, so we can just turn that on. And then now let me grab the camera and let's take you behind the screen and we'll kind of climb up in there and take a look. So up here in the top, you can see we've got all the power wires coming down. And we use these little kind of clips to be able to kind of manage those cables. So we've got a work light back here that I can turn on. This here are, there's technically three little lights here that we installed. So that kind of down fires this little blue light right there that you can see. And then up top, we've got, like I said, we've got a work light down there and a work light right here. And then all the power comes down here. So from the top, just cable managed down through there. And it drops all the way down to the bottom underneath. So before we climb out of here, I'll show you the opposite side. Actually, let me climb down and climb over there. Now on the other side, on the right side, you can see I've got all of my speaker wire, that black cable is the HDMI cable. And then those are just kind of tidy. And they go all the way down to the bottom underneath which is where all my speaker wires are. So let's climb underneath. We'll take a look there too. Now, when we built this cabinet, one of the biggest things I wanted to have is easy access behind all my equipment. So right here, again, lighting's kind of terrible, but this easily slides out and I can climb in and get behind all of the equipment. And with the cabinet open, we'll just take a peek back here. You can kind of see, I mean, it's not horrible, but it's not the greatest wire management. So here I'm just going to show you on the front before we climb in there. I've got a Panamax 5500. So all of my equipment other than my two subwoofers are connected to that. So let's go ahead and climb in through here. Take a look underneath. All right, so it's a pretty tight squeeze back here, but here you can see we've got a work light there right next to it. Let's see if we can crawl over here for you guys. So right next to that is two 20 amp circuits. So that's tied into that same 20 amp. So you can see I've got one of the JTR captivators plugged into there. That's a switched outlet. Right here in the middle, we've got our main power cable. So this is a really, really thick power cable. And that plugs into this box right here. So that powers this entire cabinet. So there's power going there. Sorry, I'm like all cramped back here. <laughs> Here's another power outlet there. 
And then there's like this little tray that I've got some um, cables going underneath, as well as just an old school surge protector. Over here on the right, we've got the Marantz AV7705 XLR cables coming over to the Monolith 11X amplifier. And above that, we've got the Pioneer UDP LX500 4K player and the PS4 Pro. And to the right of that, we've got the Mini DSP 2x4 XD. So as you can see, I've, I love using these little uh, Velcro straps. So these are all my speaker wires coming from up top where I showed you. So that comes up here like this. And then we've just got everything tied. It goes all the way down to that side. And then back up through where we saw up top. So here's just another angle. I tried to lay down for you guys to see kind of how this is all set up under here. This is just a support beam right in the middle that kind of supports, you know, the main section. And that's the inside and underneath of my cabinet. So each one of these panels right here are removable. I can just lift up on them. That way, if I wanted to, um, it still would be hard, but if I wanted to put towers like right here, I could actually remove this, put the tower right here and it would kind of shoot up, you know, behind the screen. Probably not the best solution since you've got two by fours, you know, right here. And then you've got the cabinet in the front. So I'd rather have them raised up on the platform. All right, and if we take a look on this far, this would be the right side of the cabinet. This is just an old Yamaha receiver. I use this to power two outdoor speakers. But right back there, you can see there's these two, basically light switches. So what that powers is one of these. So you can see that's a, we labeled it um, subs switched. So basically one of those cables or one of those switches right there turns on and off this subwoofer. And then down there, there's a second one, same thing. So I can be able to turn on or off one or two of the subwoofers just using that switch without having to go into my menu of my uh, AV7705. So that just makes it really, really convenient. And that's why I don't have the subs connected to that Panamax 5500. So again, here's just some more of that cable management. So these are speaker wires going to the receiver. They come all the way over here. Just got those zip tied. And then they go up through those holes right there. And then up into the attic. Now on the back of the Panamax, everything else is uh, being plugged into this to be able to protect it, uh, you know, from surges and things like that. And so that would be, you know, the amplifier, the monolith amplifier, the um, Marantz AV7705 and so forth. And then the Pioneer uh, UDP LX500 4K player. Now, as I showed you back here, there's two work lights. One's back there. And there's one back there. That's the blue lights. There's supposed to be one right there. And that just kind of shines down here, but doesn't really do much. But what I wanted to show you is under here, there's another switch. So this switch, right, it's hard to see it, under here, that turns on and off that work light right there, as well as up here. And while we have the screen open, I might as well show you the LED strip that I installed down here. So this is what I call the reveal lighting. So I use this to reveal behind the screen, so the speakers, when the screen is down. And it's gonna be hard to tell, but right here, we've got these little brackets. So that just holds it and secures it down here so it doesn't kind of move around and it just uses a nail into this two by four right here. And then I can control that. Alexa, speaker lights off. 
All right, so there you have a first look behind my equipment to see what it looks like kind of inside the cabinet, underneath the cabinet, how I run all of the cables um, as far as the power cables and my signal cables from the attic. Well guys, if you found this video helpful, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel because I produce two to three videos every single week. And as always, you guys be blessed and we'll catch you in the next video.